Hey everybody, so as you know, we are working on the next few episodes. We're gonna film them, which means this week, I gotta give you a filler week episode. And very quickly, once again, this episode is brought to you by our good sponsors, Squarespace. I'm pretty sure many of you have already heard of them. You know what they're all about. We'll talk about them later. Oh, and also very quickly, you guys asked for it. So we finally made Blood of Those Who Fight for the Freedom t-shirts on geographynow.com. You can get them. Perfect for parties or uh, celebrations or uh, Halloween. I don't know, up to you guys. Anyway, we've done Brazil, we've done India, we've done Russia, and now it's time to go to Africa. I read a lot of your comments and by popular demand, we are going to do the provinces of South Africa. A few side notes before we start. South Africa has three capitals. They have 11 official languages and three general categorized people groups. The whites, the blacks, and the coloreds. The coloreds are basically anybody who's either mixed or just not white or black. It's kind of funny because many celebrities that we usually associate as icons for the black community, like Beyonce or Will Smith, they wouldn't even be considered black in South Africa. Trevor Noah even joked about this once. Also, many people groups in South Africa have kings. They hold very important important roles of influence for their communities, but on a legislative level, they don't really have government power. And finally, pretty much everybody speaks English or Afrikaans to some degree, maybe a little less in the rural areas. But yeah, in order to intercommunicate, English is usually the first language choice. All right, and with those notes in check, let's begin. First one, Eastern Cape, birthplace of Nelson Mandela. The capital is Bisho, but the largest cities are Port Elizabeth and East London. The largest people group being the Kosa people. That's right, get it right, Kosa. Also known as the language of Wakanda. Yeah, that's the language they're speaking in Black Panther. Although keep in mind the click languages actually kind of originated from the Khoisan people group, but you know, you're not even listening. Moving on. Right now, this guy, Zuelonke Sikau, he holds the title of the current king of the Kosa people. They also have a lot of chiefs and like minor kings, I was told. One of them got arrested. It's complicated. In events, you might see people wearing traditional clothing and articles like the Inkrepeta and Ikrea and the Ukkakata worn by women. Whereas for men, you might see the Inkawa, Isidanga, and Umka head beads. Ooh, there are tons Tons of beautiful sites like the Hole in the Wall, the Valley of Desolation, the Titicama Forest, and they have one of the only few ski resorts in Sub-Saharan Africa. Yes, on rare occasions, it actually does sometimes kind of snow here, especially in the winter months of like July, August. Keep in mind, we're in the Southern Hemisphere. Free State, the golden gateway to the heart of Africa. Capital is Bloemfontein, also known as the Fountain of Flowers. It's also the judicial capital of South Africa. This was basically the Old Boer Orange Free State. It was established by white Dutch colonizers that were kind of running from the British. So yeah, quite a few white Afrikaans people here. Now the largest group that lives here are the Sutu people, and just like we talked about in the Lesotho episode, they are basically the brothers of Lesotho. They have the same customs, traditions, language, and history. They wear the Basutu blankets, and they ride horses, stuff like that. Many South Africans don't even really see Lesotho as like a separate country, but just kind of like uh, diplomatically on paper, they kind of have to. Here you can see the Maloti Mountains, they're beautiful. They're also known for having Fredford Dome, the largest verified impact crater on Earth. Granted, this is also kind of like the site of controversy with that whole government land plot redistribution policy that they just started where they're kind of like either buying farm plots from white African owners like either for super cheap or they're just kind of taking it. It's a messy topic and I'm not one to speak authoritatively on it so yeah. Gauteng. That's right. Gauteng. Not Gauteng. It means the place of gold because it's kind of like the site where they had that huge gold rush back in the 1800s. It's the smallest province in size but the largest in population. It's kind of like what Sao Paulo is to Brazil. They have the largest city Johannesburg aka Josie, Joni, Joburg. And they also have Pretoria which is the executive capital of the country. So yeah, this place is kind of like a big deal for South Africa. The place is super diverse. There's all different types of African groups that live here, but the largest would probably be the Swana and the North Sutu people. There's also lots of immigrants that come here from all over the world. You got a lot of Indians, a lot of Chinese, a lot of Europeans. They have the only street in the world that is home to two Nobel Peace Prize winners. They have the tallest building in all of Africa. Of course, you already know, this was the place where the World Cup was hosted. They have the largest urban forest on earth. They have that really cool gold reef city on amusement park, a Chinese temple for some reason, one of the most notable spots, Freedom Park. It's beautiful, lots of monuments there. But overall, yeah, it's kind of like the big shot province that keeps the whole country functioning. KwaZulu Natal, the Zulu Kingdom, home of the Zulus. Capital Peter Martzburg, however, the largest city is Durban. As the name implies, it is the place of Zulus. Natal is derived from Portuguese for Christmas because Vasco da Gama kind of discovered the place on Christmas Day. Obviously, once again, this is the epicenter of everything Zulu. You've probably heard of them. Oshaka Zulu, the military leader, Zulu clothing, Zulu tradition, Zulu music, everything. They are essentially the cousins of the Swazi people that we talked about in the Eswatini episode. They even have the same reed dance festival. Even many of the white people that live here, they speak Zulu as a second language. They have a king, this guy. He actually had to take refuge on St. Helena Island to kind of avoid being possibly assassinated by his uncle, so I've been told. Gandhi used to live here and now tons of Indians have moved in. And it's really interesting because this is the only province in which Indians kind of surpassed the whites in owning 
owning all the big businesses. They are known for also kind of being like the best water activity province. You can do pretty much everything, surfing, diving, kite surfing, it's all here off the coast. Durban is a really cool city. The Drakensberg Mountains are right there and you can find the highest peak, Mafadi, that they share with Lesotho. Oh, and if you come here, try some bunny chow. It's like a really popular fattening dish. Limpopo, the first kingdom of Africa, so it's called. This is the northernmost province and it's named after the Limpopo River that they use as a border for Botswana and Zimbabwe. Capital being Polokwane. Now this province is kind of home to like three distinct people groups. Northern Sotho people are famous for having a rain queen. Supposedly she can make it rain. So many pop culture references I could throw in there, but I won't. They have a lot of cool metal art and they like to play music on this thing called the Dipela. It's like a thumb piano. Now the Tsonga inhabit areas that are both in South Africa and Mozambique. They technically kind of don't have a king, but many people that are descendants of this guy, they claim that they can be king because he was kind of like a big shot for their tribe. Now the Venda are like one of the least westernized influenced groups in all of South Africa. They do have a king and many chiefs and also there's like a subgroup called the Lemba. I think we kind of talked about this in the Ethiopia episode. They're kind of seen as like one of the lost tribes of Israel. African Jews. But yeah, that's a whole other different story. Oh, plus their women are famous for the snake dance. A famous dish over here would be Mopani worms. You can eat them cooked or fried or dried. They also have part of the famous Kruger National Park in their province. And this is also kind of the province that deals with that controversial illegal immigrants slash refugees from Zimbabwe thing going on. Mpumalanga, the place where the sun rises. Capital Nilspruit, don't know if I pronounced that right, or Mbombela. Again, just like we discussed in the Eswatini episode, this is the province that has Swazi people. They are basically the exact same people as the ones in Eswatini. They honor the Swazi king and many of their chiefs just live in South Africa. Just like Lesotho, many South Africans don't even really see Eswatini as a separate country, but it's kind of more like a parent's house with a fence over it. Otherwise, there's the Ndebele people. They also have their own king. And they're also famous for having those women that have like really big beaded necklaces and those brass bands all over over their necks. Sometimes it elongates their necks, very similar to the Karen tribe in Southeast Asia. They also have those really cool geometrically painted houses. However, those patterns were actually kind of like a little bit of a secret code that they used to kind of hide from their enemies and the boars. Otherwise, they're very famous for the Blyde River Canyon, the third deepest canyon in the world, and also possibly the greenest. Lots of amazing hiking spots, one of the oldest caves in the world. Northern Cape, the largest province, yet the least populated. Capital is Kimberley, aka the city that started the whole mining industry. Also home to the Sun, the most ancient people in the world. Now, this is an interesting one. For one, it has the highest white population ratio out of all the provinces in South Africa at over 40%, mostly Afrikaners of Dutch descent. Here you can find the Khoi and San Bushmen. Now, these are the original people that speak the click languages. They aren't even related to the majority Bantu peoples that migrated from West Africa thousands of years ago. There aren't too many of them, but they're kind of like the originals of South Africa. Otherwise, much of the province is arid or dry or desert. It's kind of like where the Kalahari Desert starts and then just kind of meanders into Namibia. Lots of cool sites though. For example, the Orange River, the longest river in South Africa. The Kimberley Big Hole and Mine Museum can be found here. There's the Wonderwork Caves where you can find ancient sun rock paintings. Big, vast open domain with ancient mystery and natural treasure. The Northwest Province. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Known as the Cradle of Humankind. Capital, Mahikeng. It used to be called Mafikeng. The largest people group here are the Tswana. They are literally siblings of the exact same Tswana people that we talked about in the Botswana episode. I love how we can just give you guys shortcuts by referencing videos that we already made. It's funny though because South Africa actually has more Tswana people than all of Botswana. Now they don't have a king but they have many chiefs actually richer than many of the kings in South Africa. And it all had to do with platinum mining. That's right. This province is the largest platinum producer in the world. It's also famous for kind of being like the Las Vegas of South Africa. It has that Sun City place which is like a casino resort on a dormant volcano. But yeah otherwise uh, very similar to the Botswanans. Uh, lots of mining and these people kind of know how to handle money very well. And finally, Western Cape, the wine country. The capital is Cape Town, which is also the legislative capital of South Africa. And it's also nicknamed the Mother City. Now, you know, technically this place could have also been called the Southern Cape because it is geographically the southernmost point of Africa. It's so south, you can literally see penguins on the beach sometimes. It's where the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean meet. It's the first place where the Europeans arrived in South Africa. Now this one's interesting too, because it's the only province in South Africa where the colored people make up the majority. 
mostly mixed between white and black. Afrikaans is the most commonly spoken language, however English is used a lot in Cape Town. So many iconic places to visit like Table Mountain, Robin Island Prison and Museum, colorful houses of Bokap, Cape of Good Hope, Cape Point, these cool mountains. But yeah, beautiful place, interesting backstory, and wine. Wine country. They love, they love wine here. And that is it, the provinces of South Africa. Before we go, just want to give a huge thanks to our sponsors Squarespace. For those of you who don't know, Squarespace is a website where you can make a website. They have a lot of cool templates and tools you can use. They make it so super easy. A lot of people use Squarespace. It's good stuff. And if you go to squarespace.com slash geography now, you can get a 10% discount. But yeah, I just want to say a huge thank you to Squarespace. Thank you guys so much for reaching out. Really appreciate that you're helping out geography now. You guys rock. Thanks Squarespace. So yeah, that's just about it. We got to work on the next country episodes. Thank you for watching this episode of Filler Week. And uh, I guess uh, roll credits. Thank you. Stay cool. Stay tuned.